I'm going to go through the idea of the boundary conditions now to actually constrain what this term is. So a separate video went through the idea of normalization. Now boundary conditions are going to be really critical. We're not always going to have them, but the infinite well is a ex great example where we can understand what's happening. We've said that at x equals zero, we in fact have to have our wave function equal to zero. That's why we have sines and no cosines. Now we look at the other edge. We have two boundaries to worry about. So one boundary allowed us to actually throw away the cosine term. The second boundary is going to constrain what these ei values can be. So what do we do? We say, well, when I have my wave function at x equals l, that has to equal zero. And so that's going to be that normalization coefficient, which again, we find through integration and we don't need to know exactly what it is for this. And then we have sine, and I'll write this out exactly actually, for 2m e to the i over h bar squared x. Now in this case, x is going to equal l. So what do we know about this? Well, when is sine of something equal to zero? Sine is equal to zero when you have n pi, right? Where this is an integer, so zero, one, two, so on, right? So if we think about kind of phase, we've gone through half a cycle here, so this would be like zero pi, pi, zero pi, pi, two pi, zero, pi, two pi, three pi. So that is how we actually get to zero. So what we then can say is, oh, this inside in fact has to equal n pi. So at this point, we can just work with the inside of the function. And so I get to say that my square root of 2m ei over h bar squared l equals n pi. Now there's one thing I'm going to change a little bit here. Originally, I was calling this e sub i, because that's what I started with. But now actually what's happening, let's switch colors, is that we're saying, oh, this is actually e sub n, and I have this n. So the fact that there are many different energies that are allowed, an infinite number, but of discrete energies, it's coming from this condition. So what we're trying to solve for here are the energies that are allowed. So let's square both sides and rearrange. So I'm left with e sub n, equals n squared pi squared h bar squared over 2m l squared. So I just did squared and re rearranged. So this is now a condition on what the allowed energies are. It's a function of n. And in this case, even though we said that, oh, you know, n could be zero and this would be true, if n is zero, that means my energy state is zero. So this is actually really just true if n equals 1, 2, 3, so on. Positive integers. Now, we don't want to talk about negative energies in this case. We're really just defining this first, um, this first one to be a, a positive value. So this is the idea of the boundary conditions. The boundary conditions, what the width of this looks like or what one of the edges are, that has in fact constrained what my e sub i are. This means I've now found my energy eigenvalues here, and the corresponding energy eigenstates are defined here, or in this general form, where we then have what our possible values of energy are. And again, that A would come from normalization. So at this point, we're basically done. But notice that we had to really understand what these sinusoidal functions look like in terms of the geometry of our well, and we had to do that integration to get what that normalization is. But now we're done.